Scottish woman, yeah. 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 hospital. She isn't thought to have got it wrong. Yeah. Some yeah. experts yeah. say yeah. that yeah. one yeah. 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 can damage yeah. their hips, yeah. while one woman who believes swaddling may have led to her daughter's health problems is Emma Bradley. She joins me now with her daughter, Erin. And the paediatrician, Dr. Alistair Sutcliffe, from the Child Institute, from the Institute of Child Health. Welcome, all of you. Take me through what happened to Emma in terms of when you realised there was a problem. I'm to Emma, she said. Yeah, Erin never went dead as a baby and didn't walk until she was uh, 21, 22 months. And when she did start walking, it was with a severe limp and her foot turned in. And it was at that point we knew there was something wrong. Now, children can be born, babies can be born with problems like that. When did you or did somebody else link that to, to the fact you'd swaddled Erin as a baby? I don't think it's been linked okay, intrinsically yeah. that it was to do with the swaddling. Um, I think Erin was born with BDH, and I think swaddling can exacerbate a hip condition if there's one already present. And because no, you don't know, if your child has a hip problem at birth, um, it's not always picked up. It wasn't picked up in Erin's case. And so I think, you know, swaddling may be exacerbated an issue that was already there. Erin, do you like walking? Do you do a bit of running as well? Yeah. <laughs> do you feel confident swaddling Erin? Did you know how to do it correctly? Yeah, um, we have been, Erin's my third daughter. Our third child, I had struggled previously with the other two who had had no hip problems, no health problems at all. I didn't swaddle Erin tightly. I knew there were safe ways to swaddle. The midwives in hospital actually, you know, show you swaddling, they use it. And it wasn't until much later when I started, when Erin had been diagnosed, when I was talking to Steph's charity, that they sort of really highlight the safe way of swaddling. And I don't think that's promoted enough. Dr. Sutcliffe, from this research, is every baby at risk or only babies who would have already had a congenital hip problem? I think the thing we need to remember is that babies when they're inside their mother are not straightened out, mm. they're folded up so it's a natural process by which they will gradually extend over time so in a sense swaddling is a little bit artificial and if you do do it tightly and repeatedly that's not going to help whereas um, Emma has said um, the baby's already got some slight quirk in the hip joint which because of the fact that they've been kept in this essentially artificial posture when they're being swaddled and they're being straightened out, they um, exacerbate whatever was the sort of root of the whole thing. It's very difficult to swaddle correctly anyway. It's just midwives do it in, in a flash, don't they? And you look and you think, I, I can't even attempt that. Is it taught in hospitals properly? Um, not to my knowledge, um, but um, I think that it's, it's sort of the idea of extremely repeatedly and there's some places where they've been put. Okay. So I think very briefly, yeah, yeah. if there is a, a new mum out there now who is putting the baby to bed swaddling, would you say carry on or would you stop it? I would say um, if that baby needs it to get to sleep, then it's possible to do it, but not every day and not very tight around the hips. Okay, Dr. Sutter. Erin, thank you very much for coming in and Emma too. Thank you all. Finally, it's beaten off the romance of Rome, the nightlife in New York. <laughs>